TM Talks All Moves Explained, Grandmaster Chess Explained, where every move is covered and uh, we're trying to understand the thought process that went into that move from two Grandmasters. Uh, so hoverboard, we have a brand new game played in the Bundesliga. I am white against uh, Grandmaster Anton Korobov, who's a very strong uh, Ukrainian Grandmaster. Uh, I was a bit surprised I was going to play him. I didn't think the Ukrainians would uh, uh, come, uh, but but they did. Actually, a lot of Ukrainians came, and I was not prepared for Korobov, so I had to wing it uh, at the board. But let's get into it. We have a lot of moves to explain uh, to, to get to this... Um, Final. I am white, and as I said, I was not uh, uh, prepared. I know a little bit about Korobov. I know he usually plays uh, Grunfeld or Nidorf with black, uh, and I was not prepared for either of them very well. I was thinking a little bit about the knight of, uh, but, uh, and I was even tempted on the next move. But knight f3 is, is part of my sort of uh, default repertoire. It's uh, something I can always play. I have more or less everything worked out here, so I was not, um, well, too too nervous about it. C5, that was also um, to be expected, I think, if I prepared, I would know that that is what it usually does. And uh, the reason why I play C5, of course, um, Knight F3 is, is, is a nice, flexible move. The reason why I play C5 is, is uh, to that he's not afraid of a transposition into the Sicilian because he plays the Sicilian more, more or less exclusively with black. Um, I was tempted to play e4, but my repertoire with knight f3 is this English symmetrical lines. Uh, the thing I would like to have is, is, is position where I push d4 and take back and we'll have sort of a Sicilian uh, Morosi uh, structure. We'll have more about Morosi in a later uh, video. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm hoping for d4. He goes knight f6. Um, the thing is, I didn't know... He, in some ways, I would like to play this move right now. The problem is, I didn't prepare this gambit. And uh, it's not a bad gambit at all. And uh, and he could he could play that. He's a dynamic player. Uh, I think he's a very great style, this uh, Korobov. Um, and, uh, and he's very entertaining, uh, both as a person. And I kind of like him. Um, anyway... Uh, so I didn't prepare this, so I said, okay, let's not do this. Let's play knight first, knight c3 first. So getting the knights out, very good common sense. Um, on e6, you can choose between d3, d4, e4, and e3, and so on. So there's a lot of options. On, on this move, I would definitely go d4 and get into this kind of structure that we discussed a little bit. Uh, but of course, he went d5 which is the mark of the Grinfeld player, uh, getting uh, the, this pawn forward, and he will usually follow up with something like g6. Uh, take and take, and here there are many options. Uh, lately, this move has become quite popular, here, this move. And, um, and this move is also played a lot. On this move, you can consider this move. But black can also play the so-called uh, Rubinstein system with knight c7 and knight c6 and e5. All good systems. But uh, I, I got an idea here, and that was over the board inspiration. By the way, there's no other move than taking that makes sense at all. Otherwise, d4 will come, hitting the knight. So I have to take e4, uh, hitting the knight. And if he moves the knight... Uh, other squares than, than b4, I will push uh, d4 and get a position with more space and a lead in development, which I would like to have. So the next move is forced. Um, and here the main line is uh, bishop c4 and uh, very complicated stuff. Uh, but I got an idea here. And uh, the reason for that idea is is due to uh, something I often do is trying to use uh, ideas from different colors. So we're just going to go to the next game where I'm just going to show you uh, something. Uh, here, this line is something I could get for white. Uh, here, I don't really... Uh, here, there's both these systems 
and uh, and this is a lot of theory and this system um, so here I would like to play d4 but when I played uh, Jonas uh, he played this move and it turned out uh, that this was not so simple at all of course you can get into a Kalashnikov Sicilian with e4 but otherwise if you try to 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 play in an English way with d3 black gets a lot of counterplay on the on the king uh, queen side and and I didn't like it so much for white. And maybe in this position, actually, this move. Is, oops, oops, this is a very bad move. Uh, this move is better, uh, saying that it can go to to this square and it controls this square and so on. And it doesn't sit there where it's not very good. So that's why uh, I realized this is not clear that white has an advantage here. Well, he can, of course, the Kalashnikov should be a little bit better for white. So. That's why in this position here, after knight b4, I know that the main line is something like this, and check, and you go with the king, and it's all complicated. Maybe it's good for white, maybe it's fine for black. I think black is more or less okay here. Um, anyway, uh, I played d3 with the idea to transpose into the other line just with a uh, tempo more. Because the knight is often going here anyway. So that was, uh, and I'm not sure it was played before. It was definitely uh, over the board inspiration. Uh, he, he can play something like, like this. Um, but then a3 and the knight will have to go to this square. And, and something like this. Um, I would probably play, play, play this move. And if he takes... I just take back with the pawn, and I will I will play f4 and have sort of a slight like a Sveshnikov position or something, and uh, and also with bishop pairs I like bishop pairs so and especially against strong player it's nice to have something in the bank and a bishop pair is money in the bank so uh, even though your the structure is bad and uh, and so on and you have a hole here you will you will have strong bishops and you will have a lot of counterplay and you will have something that can turn nasty for him so that was uh, that was the main idea uh, he thought for for some time at this point and then uh, realized that this knight here means this knight has nowhere to go so instead he went uh, here, I was, I was, I was kind of impressed with this move. Um, I was, I thought that was, that was kind of cool um, to play this move. Uh, hmm. Because I was, I was, of course, if he, uh, if he does something weird, uh, for for instance, in this position here, if he plays something that looks very positional, then White counter plays very fast. It's, it's really annoying. He's already uh, in problems with the pawn here and. Um, and something like this maybe, and and white is is clearly in the driving seat I immediately. So that was um, that was what I was hoping for. Anyway, he went here, kind of cool, uh, just moving the the pieces around, and and now this might be a threat. And uh, on this move, I was a little bit annoyed that he make maybe do this move, and I don't want to take with the bishop. So, what to do here? Uh, I decided to play uh, this move, preventing the bishop, and I'm hoping this bishop will not be able to find work. Uh, this is sometimes played in, in different kind of Sicilian, and this is a little bit like a Sicilian, uh, except that this pawn is here instead of this pawn here, right? Um, uh, so, so, I'm preventing the pin uh, and, and fighting for this square. He played knight d4. He could have played e5, and we will have some sort of a Kalashnikov where I have played got, gotten a3 for free. This is a move you would like to play in the Kalashnikov. I think I'm not a Kalashnikov expert, so I thought that was okay. Here, I I think I have to take. Uh, otherwise, he 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 will he will come with the other knight, and he might get some control over the center. So I took, and he took back his pawn, and I went here. And this is the move, the position after nine moves, none of us have developed a piece. Uh, and <laughs> and so on. We moved the knights around a lot. He moved his knight like uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then it was exchanged. But he's, he's okay anyway. Um, this structure, um, developing the knight makes sense is 
is supposed to be fine for uh, for me. Uh, he does have more space, but I don't have any problems exchanging. This is not a bad bishop. It's it's not gonna sit here and just do nothing. I can I can exchange it, and uh, I will always have this potential uh, move to undermine his center or attack on the king side, and even on the queen side, I'm not clearly worse at all so i think i prefer to be white here uh, in general not because i think you have an advantage but because the position is easier for white to play um, bishop e2 makes a lot of sense um, uh, there's no reason to put the bishop here when when it first of all this is where it's going to attack second of all this uh, you can just ex as well exchange it here it could also sometimes be nice to have uh, this maneuver in and then uh, attack on this diagonal, which is often good with this pawn formation here. e5, for instance, a bishop here would be nice now, right? That would be nice. Then uh, he would be the one who's begging to exchange it instead of me. Uh, I played knight d2 first. I was pretty sure the knight was going this way, and I had some wake idea that maybe I could play this move and take back with the h pawn and then keep the rook on the open file here that is to be honest that that kind of hope against a 2700 player well at the moment uh, korobov is 2695 uh, in the, this game but i think i actually he probably lost a lot of rating but he is a 2700 player and uh, and he's not gonna it's not gonna fall for things like that. So, so it's it's. I could just as well as have castles. Uh, but also, it feels right to develop pieces before a castle. Uh, so he, even though it's hard to see that he can he can somehow push the pawns over here. I was, I, I like to get the pieces out. Bishop easier. But then I said, okay, I don't I don't see it. Bishop d4. He's not gonna take. He's just gonna wait. Uh, so I castle, um, and he castle, and I play a3. Um, sort of a waiting move, but it's also sometimes uh, this might come in handy. Um, but it's and it, it does take away this important square for black. By the way, by castling, I should explain every move. Uh, I am bringing my king to a safe place, and he does the same here. And a3 taking away the the b4 square, bishop. D7. I was a little bit surprised by that. It's clear that the bishop somehow had to go. Um, because in order to maybe be able to, to attack in the C file, uh, where to go is not exactly clear. Um, you can say that why Black's hope is to do something with, with maybe this square or uh, if he's lucky, this square. Uh, what he should be careful about is this one because that would give up this square and make all my pieces good. So uh, that's uh, that's kind of the problem. And in general, what I like about White's position is he, ha he has no bad pieces at the moment, uh, and that's always nice. Bishop d7, uh, and of course, uh, Korobov, even though he's probably respect me as a player, he, he of course wants to win, uh, even though he's black. So here he, he thought for a long time and decided to keep the bishop which is a bit surprising. Uh, of course, in general, you can say that you would like to exchange this bishop when you have uh, pawns on these squares because this, the one left is gonna be very good compared to this one uh, because you can attack, it cannot do anything but defend and it's sort of in the way and it cannot play on the white squares. So um, we are fighting a little bit over the white squares and, and at the moment I'm winning Bishop e8. Um, by the way, uh, he's, uh, he's setting up knight g3. I played, and I was very, uh, very sort of, sort of. Uh, I didn't know exactly how to play this. Um, I was not. It's not clear. It's clear that if I play this move, then I will probably regret having moved the pawn to a3 because he takes and he will have some play on the dark squares, and 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 he will get this square for for the knight. So so f4 immediately is not a good idea. Um, I could try to play b4 and pressure, trying to pressurize here, or uh, as I decided, I decided that it's probably the best idea is to move pieces towards 
the king side where I will have the best chances to to do something. So I play d3. It it does uh, it, it does take away some squares. It prepares h4 that maybe maybe not be good and it prepares f4 so i will be able to take back with the pawn and getting an open file here which is typical in the king's indian is known as nice for white b5 so black is uh, is is going to play on the, the queen side and by the way it's nice for him even though uh, it that the, the Bishop here is covering the knight, uh, so there will no, not be some some loose knights here. It's it's, it's kind of uh, easy to overlook, like Carlson did, that there was a bishop on g8, uh, and and this is the same here that uh, the bishop is is covering here, and it, it might be a good bishop, but this is also annoying bishop because it does take away this square for black, and it's hard to see him do anything serious on the queen side without that. Knight f3. Um, queen d6 and knight f3. That was getting the the pieces to the the, the queen side. I'm also getting ready just to uh, to finish developing here and here. And sometimes if he plays f6, the knight would like to go something like this. Um, maybe I would push the pawn here first. That could always be dangerous for him. Um, f6 is always is something. That you should be a little bit. Sometimes people just play it, but it's it's you should be a little bit wary about it because actually having uh, this battery here uh, does obstruct White's attacking play on the king side. Queen d6. Now that sets up a little trap. Uh, he's actually threatening something here, uh, which the on uh, if you're not. Uh, uh, open here if you for instance uh, play like move like this then comes this shocker f5 just and and, and after uh, this move um oh we can we can say this one is 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 rather easy right just losing uh <laughs> getting the, the the poor bishop trapped and uh, if instead you take I take here, it just goes like like this, and also trapping the bishop because the queen takes away this square which I had before. So he's uh, setting up traps. He's playing for traps. I saw it. Ace four. Um, the general idea is that he will not be able to do without f6 at some point. Uh, for instance, but f6 is always really dangerous. So here I will go something like this, and then I'll play something like this, and then I'll play something like this, and I'll play the queen here, and I'll play a king here, and I'll play rook here, and I'll play knight here, and this one will feel very, very, very afraid down on uh, g8. Uh, it is a, a serious attack white is, is hoping to, to make here. Of course, you don't get this kind of thing against a player like uh, Anton. So he continues with the plan uh, on side. Please notice that if he goes this too early, he gives away this square. So the knight will come here. A knight on this square that cannot be driven away is usually always good. So um, bishop d2, just finishing the development and maybe getting ready for this move. A4. And here uh, I found out that um, that maybe I'm a little bit afraid of, of his queenside play after all. Uh, this, the, the, this pawn could be weak and this pawn could be weak. Uh, so even though bishop d2 was designed uh, to... to to connect the rooks, it was also designed to prepare for a special move against a4, that is b4. It's it's a very defensive move, uh, to be honest. I was, I was, a, of course, I was a little bit afraid of uh, Korobov. Um, he is a very strong player. Um, the idea is, if he takes, then I actually become very active. Uh, he could take here, but then I take here. And uh, the, the, any kind of knight moves uh, runs into to, to this here, and he's actually having some problems uh, developing here that is not so easily solved. So I thought, um, and, and I might even be threatening this move, um, could be, or take here and here. So that was uh, that was 
he, I, you could just feel that he was a little bit disappointed here, and he decided that oh, and okay, and if we do something like this that we said before, then and I play this move, something like this, and it's 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 really starting to look scary very fast for for black. So it's it's like you really have to. <laughs> Do not <laughs> some something like this, and 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 I will, uh, and you can do something in a C file. I don't know what, but I will just attack you, and uh, and and this, and all my pieces will work together to 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 create this attack. And there's not much to to attack for you. So I like B4 uh, in that sense. Uh, unfortunately, he, he decided that okay, I'm not I'm not really better, and I need uh, this bishop. I cannot have these rooks. Unconnected in this position, uh, well, white is, is maybe threatening to to simply take over with with something like this, and uh, it's time to uh, to play safe. So bishop d7, challenging this bishop that is due to this pawn supposed to be the bad bishop, but now is the good bishop because his bishop is passive and it takes it took away this square. So it was it was uh, too annoying to allow be allowed. Uh, knight h2, uh, I was. Hoping uh, maybe to to still uh, uh, I was still slightly uh, optimistic here. I thought maybe maybe I could get something at some point. In this kind of rook c8, but then and I thought okay, I probably have to uh, to do something. If I want to play, I have to play something like this here and uh, f4 and and get going. Um, or king d2 or something. I could also apply, but but I was a little bit afraid of him just getting his pieces up in the c file, and uh, there will be an attack. And if I don't have an attack, then his dominance on the queen side will lead to me losing something at some point and losing the game. Uh, and that's an easy way to lose against a very strong player like Korobov. So I decided, okay, but there is actually uh, not that many squares on the c-file. This bishop controls here, controls here. Uh, these walls of pawns here are also controlling things, so he can't really get his knight into the queen side. If you look at it, he this is, is an important point. He cannot get this guy down here, somewhere uh, in in my queen side. Uh, the only idea there is is to sacrifice. Of course, it makes no sense in exact this situation, but something I have to be wary about, which we will see just in a second. So rook c1, playing um, knight a7, and I decide, okay, let's exchange everything. The thing is, I would like to, I would like to have to do done it this way and then play queen g4. Um, unfortunately, he takes here first, <laughs> and then uh, I'm, I'm running out of uh, tempo and uh, giving away all my trumps. So I play queen e2 first, um, just keeping control over this square and uh, connecting the rooks again. Rook, rook takes, rook c8, just exchanging everything. There's nothing else to do uh, but, it, but to exchange. And he takes with the knight. I take on d7 and queen d7 and I play queen g4. Um, and here, he, if he was very aggressively inclined, he could play something like this. It is, um, it is a little bit dangerous to play this way. Um, I could, for instance, play something like this. Uh, and, and I will have play on the queen's king side. Uh, this, Combined with with this piece and this piece, and although and by the way, I'm also here threatening to just close the queen side, and and something like this, I decided was 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 too dangerous for him. It's um, I might even win this pawn soon, so I, I decided that um, I kind of liked this position, and then he took, and that was uh, of course the best move. Um, I took back, played f6. So what can we say about this ending? Well, it's drawn if I don't do anything stupid. Uh, and what could be stupid? How? And this is a good thing to think about here. He, by the way, he played f6 to cover this pawn. How can I lose this game? Well, the only way I probably can lose this game is either that he gets he gets all these pawns going like crazy uh, down my uh, and get a lot of space advantage, or he managed to sack something on this square. 
uh, and and then this pawn will run so i have to be careful about that uh, i have time at the moment if he takes i just take with the bishop nothing or i can also take with the pawn it doesn't matter because i have still have this way of stopping the pawn um but h5 and knight a7 and now i have to be careful if i do something uh, stupid here uh, i will not have time because he is threatening this move and this move and um for instance, if we say something like this and here, and you go something like this, then this move is very, very annoying because uh, something like this is a problem. I'm going to maybe even play this move first. And next up is this move. So that's what to avoid. Don't fall for that trick one good point here is to see what your opponent is threatening so here a very important move knight h2 how does that defend the a3 pawn well answer is coming knight c2 and we see that if he takes i can just take back e3 knight e1 a2 knight c2 covering a1 and of course winning so uh, after this move King has an I play g4, and this, by the way, is the rule of thumb. Uh, he ha he's got this one, and he's got this one, and I got this one. I'll make it yellow, uh, meaning that I should put my pawns on white. Unfortunately, it's too late over here, but in general, I should just put my pawns on white, meaning that if you want to, not having this as a horrible bishop, he has to exchange a lot of pawns to, to get it out to work. Uh, and, and of course, there's nothing to do on the queen side except sacrificing as long. So I have to keep on having that defense. And as long as I have that, no problem at all. So, um, it came like um, it came like this g6 take take and here he played g5 did like this and i said okay it's okay anton fair enough a draw it is a good game uh, of course nobody after g5 well if he wanted to do something he could play f5 but still um there's no reason to think he has any kind of chance to win this this position at all. Um, he's still got these, and I will not. Uh, I will not. I'll just keep my pawns here. Uh, I'll take once, and then I'll put, move the knight or something. And I don't think I can lose. I could just uh, maybe do this. Take back here. Put the knight here. Put the bishop here. I don't see how I can lose that position. Um, so. That was uh, the game against Korobov with our every move explained, and all moves explained, as I call it. Uh, I hope you like this series, and please leave your comments. And we are still looking for members, so if you would like to be a member of GM Talk, uh, please uh, sign up. Uh, you get to choose some subjects. We will have one uh, subject from one of our members coming up soon. So everybody uh, who's member, at least the first 100, will probably have the chance to choose a subject. Uh, this was TM Talks. Thank you for watching uh, and hope to see you soon.